I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the podcast that no one asked for. My name is Guy. And I am Babs. And no one asked for this. Uh, today, we are going to be reviewing Rambo, Last Blood. It's a film starring Sylvester Stallone and a bunch of other people I don't remember. It's another installment in the Rambo series. I believe it's the fifth movie, but uh, we don't do research here because that's a waste of time in which a former Vietnam War veteran is always randomly having to kill people because he can't seem to stay uh, out of trouble or in peaceful parts of the earth. In this installment, his, uh, I, I don't know, some random girl that lives with him is kidnapped in Mexico, and he has to go kill a bunch of people in the cartel to rescue her. Okay, Babs, let's start with our usual first category, which is most memorable moment. What you got? Booby trap sequence is my most memorable moment. Uh, Very Home Alone-esque. He's been living on this ranch in Arizona, and he has created all these underground tunnels. He knows the bad guys are coming to get him, and he sets up all these booby traps and landmines and stuff for the bad guys to come and be uh, eviscerated in. I do like that sequence because why watch a Rambo movie if you're not there to watch people get killed in gruesome ways? The nuance of storytelling has long left the franchise, so enjoy the uh, violence. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting, some of those deaths. My most memorable moment is during that uh, Home Alone Rambo scene. Uh, well, it's actually the end. The last bad guy who he saves to kill last, he pins him to the wall with arrows and then cuts his heart out and shows it to him as he's dying. Uh, it's very Mortal Kombat, if you remember that video game from the 90s, which I do because I'm old. And I love a live-action Mortal Kombat finishing move to end the movie. Uh, next up, we have the Vinny the Microwave Johnson Award for the best background player, or who did the most with the least amount of screen time. Who you got, Babs? Okay, there's a horse in the opening sequence of the movie that's doing some spinning around. It's an excellent horse. That horse probably has some awards, and I feel like, based on how I feel about most of the movie, that horse was excellent. And, and the horse lives because he lets it go before the bad guys show up. Yes, that is true. I was sure the horse would play some role in the final sequence, but apparently Sylvester Stallone just wants us to know how good he is at riding horses. Yeah. Mine will have to go to the horrible friend in Mexico that set up the whole sequence of events that led to the random girl. What's her name? I don't remember. Gabriela was the Okay. Girl. To Gabriela being kidnapped in Mexico. It never revealed what her motivations are, and she's a very stereotypical... Uh, Mexican young woman so she's the microwave Johnson award for me but there wasn't a lot to pick from you picked the mm-hmm. horse and I picked the person that's in 30 seconds of the movie if that she's probably the only person on screen that didn't die horribly or cry she should have cried with all that eye makeup on the next segment we're going to go into is the most valuable performer or the MVP of the movie and for this I have Stallone because he seems to be the only person that wants to be in this movie. You know, for his age and current level of fitness, uh, he was there and he was doing something. I w- I'm going to have to say the same thing because I feel like he did the most work in the movie. There was a couple other people I thought about. The, uh, the lady in Mexico that helped him. But he just was the only one that seemed to be acting. So what's your gut reaction to the overall movie? Sad and murdery. Those are the two words I would use to describe this movie. Sad and murdery. There was a part of the movie that I was sad, and then the rest was murdery. I kind of feel the same way. After the first 15 minutes of the movie, everyone that appears on screen is either crying or killing. You know, I'm okay with violence in movies. I'm desensitized to it. But the I'm, I'm old school. I like wrestling storytelling where there's a baby face and a heel. And the, the heel keeps getting over on the baby face until the final matchup where the, the baby face stands tall and the heel gets his comeuppance. I'm not sure that's what was happening here. 
it's what it's the story they wanted to tell, but it didn't land. In which case, you need to either be have unintentional comedy where you're laughing because the movie's so bad it's good, or in the dramatic scenes need to have some weight. And this kind of fell in the middle for me. So, and that will lead us to our rating for the movie. We tend to rate as rewatchable, watchable, forgettable, and waste of time. Barbara, what's your rating for well, Rambo? I'm going to have to say forgettable because I struggled to think of enough things to talk about here. I couldn't agree more. I have it in my forgettable category. It's been a while since I've had a movie as forgettable. When you're not laughing and when you're not invested in anyone's story, the only thing left is gruesome death. If I had to put it on a scale for these type of movies, there is Final Destination, which it's dark comedy, basically. And there is the original Rambo movie, which is called First Blood, Not Rambo, where there is dramatic weight to what's happening on screen and you feel bad for the situation that Rambo has come home to from war. And this did not hit either, didn't check either box and therefore just kind of is a forgettable movie. Uh, if you ever can go on YouTube and watch clips of the Home Alone sequence at the end, do that. But don't watch this movie if you can avoid it. That will conclude our podcast on Rambo Last Blood. And if you were thinking that this was a waste of your time, remember, no one asked for this. Bam!